Saurabh, and, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The Weekly Show with Adit. England Australia third one day international is the final international match between two countries before the players head to UAE for the domestic world cup and with a world ODI championship points for the crab neither team will want to rest on their laurels with respect to the previous matches and having witnessed multiple matches over the years when i saw that dramatic australian collapse which is called shocking by a few pseudo experts for me it was a moment of deja vu as this is not the first time i have seen teams collapse from a position of victory or as a few commentators said snatching defeat from the jaws of victory what has been proven is that if the teams win the toss they will want to bat first score some runs and then defend that total though you would say that australia had lost the match the moment they let england scramble from 144 rate to 234 9 the moment those extra 90 runs were added by the tail though in this case it wasn't a tail it was the semi all rounders in tom curran and adil rashid the scratch and clawed their way to 230 and then once again jofra archer got the best of david warner and then at 37 for 2 england felt they were in cruise control before a good partnership between the captain Aaron Finch and a future captain in Marnas Labuskanian. Then it all unfolded. The all-rounders in Chris Wokes, Sam Curran, Jofra Archer made sure that England would not allow Australia to score those runs and eventually the performance by these three fast bowlers allowed England to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. So now the third match which is scheduled tonight at 5.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time is a winner-take-all clash of champions match. That is the match between the current champions England and former champions Australia who are without their marquee batter in Steve Smith. But this allows other batters to come and take responsibility would be a very simple premise whichever team wins the toss will want to bat first and even a total of 240 would be good enough to defend looking at the marquee bowlers they have in each of their teams from archer woods sam curran tom curran chris wokes adil rashid to hazelwood stark and cummins Along with the spinners Ashton Agar, Adam Zampa and the fast bowling all-rounders in Mitchell Marsh and Glenn Maxwell. But all that happened on Sunday evening when Australia collapsed. They were in a winning position and they lost the match by 24 runs. It won't be a surprise if the Australian team management decide to go with the same team means giving another opportunity to the only change that could come about could be if steve smith is cleared to play in the final match remember he was struck on the head and taken for concussion tests has he recovered well not much is known of that right now if smith has recovered and he is cleared by the team doctors to play they will play but who will he replace will he replace the number three marcus stoiner who adds that bowling strength to the team or will it be glenn maxwell who despite his performance in the first match where he scored those 77 runs was not able to keep up the consistent run of form smith recovers and he is cleared to play they will definitely induct him but who will he replace? Will it be Maxwell or will it be Stoinis? Because it will be a tough choice. And going by Australia's 
repertoire owners might be the one to make way because they still believe in someone like Glenn Maxwell despite his hot and cold form means that he is not able to perform consistently over a period of time. The fact that Australia needs someone at that position to tackle Jofra Archer who has been in red hot form taking care of Warner as well as other batters. Despite Warner not able to score too many runs in the five matches so far, that is the three 20-over matches as well as the two 50-over matches so far, they will stick with him because it has happened before. We have seen former Australian openers not scoring a single one or not scoring consistently or a fast bowler making a mockery out of their batting as Jofra Archer has done to David Warner but going by how Australia functions they will continue with David Warner. The only question will be who will Steve Smith replace. Like England who have batters till number 10 means except for Jofra Archer who comes at number 11 though he is a good batter but in this case he is coming at number 11. So from the opening batters in Bedstow and Roy till the number 10 batters in Rashid and Tom Curran, they have a plethora of all-rounders. So England will not make any dramatic changes to their batting and bowling lineup. A clash of champions, a winner-take-all match. So who will emerge victorious? teams with equal strength in batting and bowling with the best bowlers in each team with Stark, Cummins, Hazelwood, Stoinis, Marsh, Ashton Agar and Adam Zampa. And remember, it's as if the world was waiting for the likes of Stark, Cummins and Hazelwood to come and take over. And the former bowlers in Megra, Gillespie, Fleming, Lee were all just fillers for this marquee trio. Who shall take the team has the upper hand after the series is won all well. The team which keeps its nerves. The team which knows that they can win from any situation, especially defending a total. That team will have a greater chance. And for that, we will have to wait and watch. One WWE Championship match I always wanted to see was between Roman Reigns and The Rock. Now, that's not going to happen because The Rock is semi-retired and has no qualms of returning back to that squared circle. So, we will have to do with the WWE Universal Championship match between Roman Reigns and his cousin Jay Uso. Most of my listeners would know who Roman Reigns is, having been a former world champion, universal champion, an intercontinental champion, a tag team champion, and an United States champion. But they would not know who Jay Uso is. Simply because Jay Uso is not known in the wrestling circles as a single competitor, but with his brother Jimmy Uso sidelined due to injury, this gives Jay Uso a golden chance to prove his skills as a single competitor. He did it when he beat four other superstars by winning a fatal four way match to be the number one competitor for the match against Roman Reigns. Those who have been following the WWE closely, especially over the last one month, and those who watch the current matches would know that Roman Reigns has aligned himself with Paul Heyman. Now remember, Paul Heyman for a long time had aligned himself with Brock Lesnar. Now with Brock Lesnar unavailable and what is his status on return to this profession, one doesn't know. That for now is something between Brock Lesnar and 
the WWE management. So Roman Reigns found himself a new alliance partner in Paul Heyman. As I said in my previous analysis of this partnership, but since his dramatic return at SummerSlam after a six and a half month break, Roman Reigns' attitude is similar to what Brock Lesnar's attitude was. Keeping it serious, no time for fun and games and focusing on what he has come for, that is winning a championship. And he did exactly that when he beat other two competitors in Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt's avatar feed when he defeated them. And how did he do that? He did not enter the match in the start. He allowed the two other wrestlers to beat each other up, get tired and when they were literally down, he swooped in, took advantage of a tired Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt and with his trademark spear, went and speared Braun Strowman and won the Universal Championship without breaking a sweat. And this is what Brock Lesnar used to do and has been doing ever since he aligned himself with Paul Heyman, which means don't sweat it out. Come when the chips are down for the other two individuals, take advantage of their tiredness and win the gold. I am not too surprised by this attitude. We all know of the conditions surrounding right now, all the pandemic virus and all that circus that is taking place. So the message must have been don't strain yourself. Make sure that you don't spend too much time in the ring getting tired. Play fair and win your championship without breaking a sweat. When his cousin Jay Uso won that fatal four-way match, the current attitude of Roman Reigns kept a poker face. Had this been a year ago, it would have been a different expression on his face. But all that has transpired over the past four to five months and the attitudinal change of a lot of people with respect to the conditions outside. I am not surprised by this attitude. Another iconic WWE Championship match that is to take place is between Drew McIntyre and Keith Lee. If one thought that Randy Orton was the biggest threat to Drew McIntyre's championship reign, well, Keith Lee, his former friend from the NXT roster, will be another threat and a perceivable threat. Once again, the question is, will we see a new Universal Champion and a new World Champion or will the current WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns and the current WWE World Heavyweight Champion Drew McIntyre retain their championships against a good opposition in Jey Uso and Keith Lee. Other iconic women's matches that are to take place that is the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bailey and Nikki Cross. Well, this is Nikki Cross's third opportunity to win the women's match and with no outside interference. Now, it could be a possibility that Nikki Cross could win her first singles championship match. As for the other iconic non-title and title matches, stay tuned for a Wednesday night special episode. The Wasteland Part 1 Come in under the shadow of this red rock and I will show you something different from either. Your shadow at morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. I sweat the wind, the imat zoo. Mine Irish kind, wo valis dew. You gave me hyacinths first a year ago. They called me the hyacinth girl. Yet when we 
come back late from the hyacinth garden your arms full and your hair wet i could not speak and my eyes failed i was neither living nor dead and i knew nothing looking into the heart of light the silence owed on lair das mir madam so stress famous clairvoyant had a bad cold nevertheless is known to be the wisest woman in europe with a wicked pack of cards here said she is your card the drowned phoenician sailor those are pearls that were his eyes look here is belladonna the lady of the rocks the lady of situations here is the man with three staves and here the wheel and here is the one eyed merchant and this card which is blank is something he carries on his back which i am forbidden to see i do not find the hanged man fear death by water i see crowds of people walking round in a ring thank you if you see dear mrs equitone tell her i bring the horoscope myself one must be so careful these days unreal city under the brown fog of a winter dawn a crowd flowed over london bridge so many i had not thought death had undone so many sighs short and infrequent were exhaled each man fixed his eyes before his feet flowed up the hill and down king william street to where saint mary would not keep the hours with a dead sound on the final stroke of 9 Homer's Iliad the seer took heart and this time he spoke out bravely beware he casts no blame for a vow be failed a sacrifice the gods enrage because agamemnon spurned his priest he refused to free his daughter he refused the ransom that's why the archer sends us pains and he will send us more and never drive this shameful destruction from the argives not till we get back the girl with sparkling eyes to her loving father no price no ransom paid and carry a sacred hundred bulls to christ town then we calm the god and only then appease him so he declared and sat down but among them rose the fighting son of atreus lord of the far flung kingdoms agamemnon furious his dark heart filled to the brim blazing with anger now his eyes like searing fire with a sudden killing look he wheeled on calacus first seer of misery never a word that works to my advantage always misery warms your heart your prophecies never a word of prophet said or brought to pass now again you divine god's will for the armies brute it about as fact why the deadly archer multiplies our pains because i i refuse that glittering prize for the young girl caresses indeed i prefer her by far the girl herself i want her mine in my own house i rank her higher than clity menestra my wedded wife she is nothing less in build or breeding in mind or works of hand but i am willing to give her back even so 
is that is best for all what i really want is to keep my people safe not see them dying but fetch me another prize and straight off to else i alone of the archives go without my honor that would be a disgrace you are all witness look my prize is snatched away pg wood house in answer to my query the old lady behind the counter told me i would find blank up at the big house with the red shutters about half a mile further back along the road she seemed a bit disappointed that information was all i was after and that i had no intention of buying a pair of socks or a ball of string but she bore up philosophically and i toddled back to the car i remembered the house she had spoken of having passed it on my way imposing mansion with a lot of land this blank i took it would be some sort of laborer on the estate i pictured him as a sturdy gnarled old fellow whose sailor son had brought home the eye sore from one of his voyages and neither of them had had the forgies that it was valuable i'll put it on the mantelpiece that no doubt the sun had set it will look well up there to which the old gaffer had replied i lad gomed if it won't look greatly on the mantelpiece or words to that effect i can do the dialect of course so they shoved it on the mantelpiece and then along had come sir watkin basse with his smooth city ways and made suckers out of parent and offspring happening all the time that sort of thing i reached the house and was about to knock on the door when there came bustling up an elderly gentleman with a square face much tanned as if he had been sitting out in the sun quite a lot without his parasol oh there you are he said hope i haven't kept you waiting we were having football practice and i lost track of time come in my dear fellow come in need scarcely say that this exuberant welcome to one who whatever his merit was a total stranger warmed my heart quite a good deal it was with the feeling that his attitude did credit to Worcestershire hospitality that i followed him through a hall liberally be sprinkled with the heads of lions leopards news and other fauna into a room with french windows opening on the front garden but he left me while he went off to fetch drinks his first question having been would i care for one for the tonsils to which i had replied with considerable enthusiasm that i would when he returned he found me examining the photographs on the wall the one on which my eye was resting at the moment was a school football group and it was not difficult to spot the identity of the juvenile delinquent holding the ball and sitting in the middle for more awesome content tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with aditya